Hi, Tom from BeaconNutrition.com and in today's video I'm going to show you how to build your own diet template uh, as in a templated day for eating to a certain amount of calories so that if you have set your calories and macros for a goal how do you then go into uh, building a diet to follow for that goal and so in, in, I've done two previous videos one was about using my calorie calculators on my site to, to determine how many calories you needed and those would have given you rough macro splits as well uh, and then the second video Video was tweaking those macros so that you see if you wanted more protein and less carbs or or whatever you wanted or, or less of a calorie deficit I showed you how to do that in those videos so if you haven't watched those videos and you're coming into this video um, just think right, I'm gonna build my diet you do need to go and work out your calories first and your macros first so I'll put the links at the end of this video or in the comments uh, below if you're watching on uh, YouTube and um, so if you haven't got your calories and macros go and go watch those videos first because always if this video won't really make any sense okay so I'm going to use my nutrition software that I use with clients for this video there are other systems out there such as my fitness pal eat this much and a few others um, so I could have picked any of those to do it um, I'm going to use my nutrition software because that's the stuff I've got all set up with my um, uh, macros and all my all my other stuff in it and also um, when I've been using my fitness pal in the past I've seen that there are some error values um, and um, and I think that's that's a real risk you're running with those that software uh, but I'll go into that later on so this is how I would build say a templated diet for uh, one of my clients to follow if they're coming on board with me as a new client okay so let's go into the software um, so you, if you've watched the other two videos, you recall that I, uh, at the moment, I'm only on a minus 100 um, calorie deficit. So I'm essentially at maintenance, but just slightly below. And the idea is that I'm actually quite happy with how I'm looking at the moment. I don't really need to feel I need to lose a load of body fat. I'm not really looking to get in shape for a holiday or something like that. So I'm just looking to maintain and continue my training and get the most out of my training. So I've set myself a very slight deficit and I've set my protein at a level which will give me a um, decent amount of muscle gains. That's 200 grams. Set my fats at a level which is... Um, conducive to losing body fat but also maintaining body uh, body health and my carbs are high enough that I can get a decent amount of carbs in for my training. So that's the way I'll set up my macros. Again, watch the other video if you haven't and I'll show you how I did that. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna then build our um, diet. So let's come out of that and let's build a meal plan. So the way you would do this in, say, my fitness pal or eat this much or whatever, is that you would um, you would say set up a sample day. So um, say like a Monday or Tuesday or whatever, just set up a day where you enter all the values, and this would be your sort of templated plan that you would follow. Now on those apps, and well, I think pretty much every app has this functionality, is if you were to say enter, let's say eggs and bacon for breakfast, um, steak and chips for lunch, etc., etc. What it would do, it would, would remember that you'd had those meals for breakfast so as long as you enter the right amounts on your template if you go into like subsequent days when you're really tracking your food you can just recall what you've had for the previous day's breakfast or uh, the previous day's lunch or whatever so the purpose of building this template as a sort of a sample day that you would eat is it allows you to then just recall those things into future days so if you have the same breakfast every day and actually i would say that most people have either one or two types of breakfast and they, they just stick with that same breakfast all the time because it's something they're used to then all you need to do is just say yesterday's breakfast yesterday's breakfast and you just, just log that as you're going through um, so yeah, so this is the reason for building this sort of templated day. So um, for what I do is I build a templated meal plan, which I send to clients, and then they enter those those details on their day. So I'm going to go through my um, diet plan, what I have um, regularly, so we can start building. You can see how I build the templates out. So. Um, the other thing you might want to do is if you've got uh, a certain amount of um, calories and macros for the day, what I would potentially do, might, you might find beneficial, is to split those meals up. So say if you've got like 2,000 calories, you might want to do 500 calories for breakfast, 500 for lunch, 500 for dinner, and then have, say, 500 for snacks. So um, my, my style is a little bit different, so, but I'll show you how I... How I, how I work around the calories. So uh, so I'm gonna have eggs and bagels for breakfast. So what I'll do is I'll put in eggs. 
Now I always put in foods that are raw values. The reason for that is that if you enter cooked values, there's a certain amount of variables that can happen with cooked values, such as losing water, losing fat, etc., and and that can then uh, skew off your values if you've entered them and you've cooked it slightly differently. So if you go for the raw option all the time, doesn't mean you have to eat it raw. It just means that you're you're entering the raw values so that you know exactly what the value is, and and uh, and then when you cook it up, even if you do lose some some fat or whatever, well, okay, that's okay because if you're losing some fat, you're losing some extra calories. Not much protein really comes off. Not much fat really comes off. Uh, sorry not much carbs really comes off so sometimes when you cook meat fat comes off and then it's a little bit leaner so that's okay uh, also things like rice when you cook them uh, depending on the amount of water that the rice has absorbed that will affect the weight so if you're saying 160 grams of cooked rice that might be anything between 80 to 60 grams of actual uh, dry rice so it's very difficult to determine an accurate calorie amount from cooked variables so i always enter them raw the only time i'd probably enter cooked variables is when i'm going say going to a restaurant and i would enter sirloin steak cooked um, because then that's what they're serving you you haven't had a chance to weigh it so i would just weigh that uh, and so uh, enter that as the, as the cooked value and accept that there's going to be an error margin there so if we're making a breakfast ourselves we're going to put in um say i normally have uh four eggs so let's put that in and then on any software you use, it'll, it'll enter the calories, the carbs, protein, and fats on there. And I also have a bagel in the morning. So let's put in bagel. Uh, let's put in bagel. Uh, put that in there. And I normally have a normal bagel, so an average size bagel is about 90 grams. Um, and there will be, um, on any software that you use, there'll be options for weights. Um, now, where my fitness pal does become a bit annoying is that uh, it sometimes will say values per like, 100 grams or values per one gram, and then you have to enter like 90 of those, of those values to multiply it up. Um, each software is different. So as long as you're entering the right weight and the right size, then that's fine. Make sure you do that. Um, so I have eggs and bagels in the morning. Um, and also, here's the other thing, is a lot, a lot of people when they enter, say, eggs on toast, don't enter the fact they put some butter on it, and that can actually have a significant calorie effect if you're using a lot of it. So we always have to put butter on, if we're having butter on our bagels, and things like jam and stuff like that as well, people just forget to enter that, so it's important that you do enter it. Um, so I have like a spreadable light butter, it's like Olivia or something, so I'll put that on, and then we're just going to have like, let's say, uh, an average spread on a roll, that's... You know, you don't, unless, I wouldn't go into weighing your, your, your spreadable butter. I wouldn't like go into a scale, oh, that much, and then put it on your, oh, I need a bit more. Just like, just an average amount, you know. So a couple of teaspoons is about enough. Um, so then we've got, uh, that's, let's put that let's, into that as breakfast. So then that's, that's now given us this sort of breakfast value here and uh, how much um, carbs are in it, protein, and how much fats are in it. The fats are high there because of the uh, the eggs and then the, the, the butter as well. Now, what I would suggest you're doing, if you, although you've got your meal sort of calorie value spaced out, you might have your, say, breakfast 500, lunch 500, dinner 500, and snacks 500. What I would do is I wouldn't start tweaking it as you're putting in. What I would do is enter all the meals you want to have and then tweak it afterwards. So say if I was going for a 500 calorie breakfast here, I might look at that and go, oh, I need to fiddle around with that. Well, don't, because the, the meals you're going to enter after that, they might be less or more calories than you're expecting. So we might have to, say, tweak the snacks down to be 400 rather than 500. And remember, it's, it's a way to have like a little plan to work from, but you need to tweak this to be relevant to you. It's no good me going, oh, I'll only have three eggs there, and all I'll have like three quarters of a bagel, because that's not gonna happen, is it? You're not gonna have three quarters of a bagel. Uh, well, you might, but it, it'd be very anal doing that sort of thing. Um, so it's better to say, oh, I'll just have the, the, the full amounts of food, and then I might tweak it somewhere else. So eggs and bagel is what I normally have in the morning, so let's do that. And then for my lunch, Let's uh, let's say I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna I normally have like something like chili and rice or like spaghetti bolognese and pasta. Oh, just about that one. So chili and rice. So the way you would build this is um, if you make it yourself, obviously you can build it from the ingredients. Um, if you're using something like one of those ready meals that you can buy, because uh, we sell like. Um, the uh, gold standard ready meals in the gym, they're really popular. In most of these apps, you can just get them and scan the barcode and um, and it'll tell you what this this much or whatever this many calories. Um, so most most um, most foods now with barcodes have been entered onto that sort of database. So so if you scan most things, it'll be there. So let's say we're gonna have, um, so I have, uh, I cook my chili 
and myself. So say if we go into entering that, um, and then again, I go for the raw values. So I have extra, um, extra lean uh, statements here. But the thing, thing is you want to check because what a lot of places will have, they'll, they'll have like extra lean or lean or full fat, whatever. You want to check what those values are because extra lean might mean 7% and you're picking up the 5% fat um uh, statements from the from the uh, from the counter so it's always a good idea if if you get in this sort of stuff go into the values so when you click on it it should tell you if you click on it the values for 100 grams so say if we look for 100 grams here we can see that fat is 4.2 so that's about a five percent uh statement which is what is is normally the extra lean option sold in supermarkets um but it's worth checking that because these sorts of things can throw you out and if you are entering things on my fitness pal, sometimes when you enter beef mints, it will give you the highest fat option. And if you enter that in, you go, oh, those calories are pretty high, but actually you're not having that option, you're having the leaner option. So it's important to check this. So I always do go for the 5% option, so I'll have that one. And and I also, oh, I'm gonna put in, so I buy normally a kilo of um, steak mints, and then I cook up a load of it at a time with a load of um, chili sauce and a load of rice, and I just divide it over five meals. So an idea when you when you're creating these meal plans is to think what can I what can I get away with creating in bulk? And uh, and normally like some like chili and rice or split bolognese or chicken curry, those sorts of things are things you can just whack a load of meat into a pan or your vegetarian option, whatever that is. Make up a big vegetarian chili or something, and then just divide it over five. And you've got five meals. You don't have to worry about cooking for another couple of days. So what I would do here, none of these values fit. So I'll put in my own value, which is 200 grams. And remember, it's raw value. Now I do drain the fat off my um, my uh, so my statements when I cook it. So I drain it off. So there's a little bit of fat coming off, which gets lost. I don't bother entering that. I don't say all oh, minus this much off because it's a bit you know tenuous to do that. But if you have done that, just be aware that you've done that, so that you've got a little bit of extra wiggle room if you need it. Um, so then I have um, I'm going to have some rice with that. Just wait for that to pop up. And this is running on the cloud, so it might be a little bit delayed. Um, so again, we're going to go for the raw values, and I have basmati rice, which is raw there. So I'm going to click basmati rice and put that in. <clears throat> okay, and we're going to have, I normally have about 500 grams and cook it all at once, and then I split it over five meals. So let's put 100 grams in there. And we're going to pull that up there. Okay, so now we've got our statements, we've got our rice, but what about our pasta sauce? Now you might want to make your chili um, pasta sauce yourself or your, or, your, or your chili sauce yourself. If you do that, obviously you can rack up all the ingredients to do. I'm, I'm very much a student type eater, so I just get a, a jar of like pasta sauce or, or, or chili sauce in the supermarket and I just whack that in. Uh, and then the jar is 500 grams, so that works out nicely. So 100 grams and then we'll go into there. So that is a chili and rice with a beef chili, minced chili with rice. Um, and that is um, one portion and I would make up five of this. So if I was looking at this for a, like a recipe to cook, it'd be a kilo of steak mints, 500 grams, which is a jar of the sauce and um, 500 grams of rice. And that's, that's a meal I cook all the time. It's so quick to cook. To cook. If you've ever seen any of my Instagram videos, you would have seen me cook up those things um, quite regularly. And all you do is just stick it in Tupperware bung it in the fridge, and then when you get out to the next one, sprinkle a bit of water on it, a little tip there, sprinkle a bit of water on it, shake it up so it loosens up a little bit, whack it in the microwave two minutes. If you don't put water in it, it dries out even more, so it's really horrible. So if you've got chicken, if you've got chili, you've got steak mints or something like that, then if you put some water on it, it just loosens it all up a little bit. So that would be my lunch there, and you can see that that's come in about 655 calories there. So if I was going for this sort of 500, 500 meals, um, I'm already over. But again, we're not going to tweak it now. We're just going to put the values in. We're going to tweak them all at the end. So then in the evening, I might, let's say we go for our, um, let's go for steak and chips. Yeah, so so I'm going to have, um, so I'm going to have a steak. So let's see what the uh, thing throws up. So again, it's given us cooked options here. I go for the raw again, if unless I'm in a, in a, in a um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a restaurant or something else. Now, if we go down the values here, let's say we go for a rump steak. Now, it might be 
that say you're going for sirloin steak and it's not here for the roll values. So if this is if this is on your system, you haven't got the food you want, you might have to create it yourself. Um, each system's different. Normally, you just scan the food and then go. It's this. It's this much protein, this much carbs, this much fat. It will say on the back of the label of any food that you buy. It'll have those values. So I'm gonna have. Let's say I'm gonna have a rump steak, and then we're gonna um, bung this in there. Uh, and it's given us some weights here, so I'm gonna go for an eight ounce steak there. Now, obviously, steak does have things like um, fat on the outside. Now, I cut off all the fat, the, the like the rind fat from my steaks. Now, you might think, oh, well, why do you think that's the best bit? Because it's just excess fat that I don't need. You know, it's saturated fat that I don't need. There's plenty of, plenty of fat contained in the meat. So why ex eat excess fat unnecessarily? So I just cut the rind off and then... Um, and then uh, eat the the, the 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 meat inside it. So um, and then and then I'm gonna have some chips. Now you've got to be honest here because what you'll find sometimes is that um, when you throw up chips, it will give you all these like uh, healthy options. And um, you know, let's be honest, nothing really tastes as good as chips. So if I'm gonna have steak and chips, I have normal chips that I get from the supermarket, and then I just put them in my air fryer. So an air fryer is like. I don't know five grams of additional olive oil added to it. Um, so we can go down the list here, and we can say, uh, ooh, everybody. So we probably go for um, the oven ones there. Put that in there. Now, what we're going to have? Medium portion, big portion. You might want to weigh it out first. I normally go for a large portion of chips because I do like my do like some chips. Okay. And you then, you know, it might be surprised how many calories are in uh, potato chips. So then that's coming in, so steak and chips is coming in as sort of 650 calories as well. So um, let's just uh, rename that. So steak and chips. Now as we're doing all this, um, you can see here that I've got my target that I'm aiming for. So this is the lean uh, body maintenance target that I set myself just now so you've got to if, if your um, app doesn't have this sort of target it most do but you, it might not have make sure you've got these excuse me these targets in mind so my target calories for the day 2617 target carbs for the day 349 target protein is 200 grams and then my target fats is 47 so because of the eggs and because of the uh, the chips there and the steak there. I'm quite close to my um, fat target already. Okay, so I'm so with these this breakdown here. This is my three meals that I might have in the day. I might also have another Chilean rice, but um, generally for, for a normal day, I would, I would have uh, just three meals at the moment because I'm uh, you know not bodybuilding competition or anything like that. So you have your three meals, and then what we do is you think about well, let's let's have some snacks as well. So it's important to always budget for snacks because if you don't budget for snacks, you will snack and then you won't have any calories left over to uh, to eat um, and then also when you put your snacks in be honest because so many people go oh for snacks i'm gonna have a celery stick and some and some some carrot sticks and some i don't know raw sprouts who has that you're gonna look at it and go okay you might be you might be a fan of those sorts of things if you are you probably don't have an issue with losing weight at the moment because you've got good control over your nutrition um, unless you're eating like you know hamburgers and stuff away from the celery sticks um, but most people snack on stuff that is tasty and is and is nice so it's important to have some tasty snacks and also some healthy snacks in there so for my snacks I generally tend to put them say like my protein shake in with my snacks because some days I train some days I don't train and I'll and if I if I train I'll have my protein shake after I train if I don't train I'll have my protein shake at another time of the day normally before I go to bed so and I've covered why I do that in another video so I won't go into it so let's say we have some whey here so uh, let's just go for a um, you can have branded stuff here now at, at the gym I sell this this protein here so let's uh, go for that because that would be the one that I have um, and let's put that in and we're gonna have two scoops here two scoops for the win uh, and then I also I have creatine as well because I have creatine in my uh, in my post-workout shake so if I do have my um, if I do have my um, my workout I'll have creatine as well uh, and creatine is perfectly safe to take unless you have kidney issues um, there's been numerous studies done on creatine with literally no serious side effects in healthy individuals you only need five grams a day and the, the optimum time to take it is, is after a workout with some carbs so my snacks there I might have a banana 
there. Oh, but let's be realistic. I might have a flapjack as well. So let's put the banana in, because I do eat bananas quite a lot in the day. So we'll put this banana in. And again, you just pick the one that fits you, fits, you know, whichever one you're gonna have. Normally a medium is because bananas aren't really measured, medium, large or whatever. So go for the medium one, that's probably about right. And remember, you know, you don't want to get too anal on measuring stuff like this. You know, as long as you're within a certain error margin of your calories, that's fine for the day. All we're looking to do at the moment is just create a template and create an idea about what the calories are that we're going to have. So we got that there. So we got our snacks. So this is our either our post-workout shake and a snack, or it'll be we might have it another time in the day. And then, and then what's also important is to think about what snacks I might have, which are actually um, not healthy in you know they're not nutritionally value they're just snack foods to snack on um now as you're going along here keep an eye on your um on your macro splits here so if we're looking at the macro splits here we've got the target you can see actually we're actually over our fat calorie targets for that day slightly under our protein and we're way under on our carbs now remember in other videos I said that actually carb and fat splits are not that relevant if we're if we're if we're talking about performance there is a slight issue with say you might want more carbs if you're training with weights more um, and you might want to keep fats low if you say you're looking to control body fat because because fats can more easily turn into body fat in a surplus than say carbs and protein can but if but I'm still within my deficit here so actually these these meals adding up even though I'm over my fats here, I'm actually still within 400 calories within my, um, my, my calories for the day. So if I ate all that, even though the fats are quite high, or high for what I would normally have, then I'm still within a calorie deficit, so I would still lose weight in that situation, okay? So that's good. So what you might want to think about is, when you come up to this, you might want to have like, so, so this is what I would say potentially called like healthy snacks. And these are snacks that help you achieve your nutritional and performance goals. So I might also have in my healthy snacks like yogurt and fruit and stuff like that. Um, because I quite like yogurt and fruit, Ben. And also look for things like bio yogurt because bio yogurt is quite good for the gut and digestion and everything else. Um, and actually, if you're looking for a sort of low calorie, high volume snack, uh, uh, fruit and yogurt is actually quite, you can get quite a lot in a bowl. So that's something that a lot of my clients do have because it's almost like a dessert and it, and it is it is quite voluminous. So you can have that. But let's, let's say, you know, we want to have um, unhealthy snacks. So these are snacks you might sit in front of the TV and eat. And, um, and if you watch me on my YouTube or my um, Instagram, you know that I do actually quite like a bit of a snack on crisps or something in the evening when I'm watching the TV uh, or playing Nintendo. And uh, uh, let's go for, uh, I, I don't like the term unhealthy, so let's just go for um, soul snacks. So soul snacks would be things that you would eat just for self-fulfillment. Oh, I like the taste of that, so I'm gonna have some of that. Now, I generally will go for a few Pringles here. So let's go for, I'm not sponsored by Pringles, of course, although I should be because I eat so much of them. Um, so let's go for one of these Pringles. So I have salt and vinegar, so it's conveniently put it into there for me. So let's put it in. And the other thing to watch out for is sometimes you grab a food over, and it will give you options which aren't actually the option you would have. So it's like whole packet. So you wouldn't eat a whole tube of Pringles. Although I probably would if I didn't pour them into a bowl and regulate that. So let's say we're going to have, so let's say we're going to have like a, it's 30 grams or whatever. So that's about, you know, a bowl full. So that's giving me this 151 calories. Now, the soul snacks, you might want to regulate and just say we're going to only going to have like 400 kilocalories a day of soul snacks now the idea is is that the soul snacks is not something that you have to have it's like bonus bonus snacks um, and the reason you're having them is because you fancy them not because oh i must have my pringles today otherwise i'm not going to lift my 10 kilos or whatever extra in the gym it's not like that this is just for something you want to snack on if you get the urge to snack now why we put this in place is like a secondary buffer for our calories so you see up to up to this point we were into sort of 2200 so we had about 400 calories to play with and we'd still be in our deficit of a 100 deficit so what we're doing here is setting up additional buffers so that we've got our meals that have hit our nutritional target so we hit nutrition target for protein there which is the main one we're looking at and we're still under our calories so what the soul snacks is is 400 calories of play play food i suppose to say which you can have if you want to but you don't have to have it if you don't have it one day you can roll over to another day or like the weekend which is called calorie banking i'll cover that in another video and the idea is is you don't have to have these foods you don't have to eat these calories 
but they're there if you want them. If you don't have them, you're in more of a deficit, you lose weight faster, or lose body fat faster, I should say. If you do have them, well, that's fine because you've accounted for them. The, the, the issue becomes with a lot of people is that they have this nice diet plan. They say, oh, look at all this healthy food I'm going to have, and then just smash a bar of chocolate and that wasn't in their calories, so they're massively overeaten because they haven't given themselves this extra buffer. So this is really important to build in this extra buffer you're going to have in the day. Now I'm quite fortunate because I'm quite, I, I've got quite a bit of muscle and I train a lot and I've got high calorie expenditure that I can actually account for 400 calories of soul snacks. It might be that you can only have like 300 or 200 or whatever you want, but put them in. If you don't have these things in your food, you will end up eating them anyway at a certain point and then feeling guilty and oh, I've messed up my diet, whatever else this allows you to have your soul snacks and still be within the deficit and still think great i've had that and i'm still in my deficit well done win for me so we're gonna have pringles there now what about i have a beer every now and again so let's have i wonder if they don't actually have got cause light on here i might have entered it at some point look at that yes so i like a cause light now i'm not going to sit here and say alcohol is bad and if you and obviously if you're a recovering alcoholic don't put alcohol into your plan please don't do that um and if you've got trigger foods don't put your trigger foods into your soul foods probably not a good idea to do that um have foods that you can control how much you have and you can put them down afterwards so one beer for me is enough i'm actually quite a fan of like budweiser and carling and stuff like that as well but those are higher calorie beers and i'm talking about i just want to enjoy the cessation of having a beer it's not important to me to have a branded high a calorie beer there so cause light does it for me it's about i think that's just 140 calories let's check that in yeah so 120 calories which is only slightly more than say what a banana would be so let's just uh, process that for a second um okay it's like 50 percent more but you know so um so i can get away with having a beer a bottle of beer and some pringles in the evening and then it's only 270 calories so uh, ironically less than my post-workout um food there but i can put that into my calories and I'm happy I can have that in the evening or I can or I can not have it and um, and I've still had a really decent day. Now, if you look at our calories here, that's my day, which would be my one of my normal days here, um, 2,500 calories. I'm still below my buffer. Remember, my maintenance is 2,700, so I'm actually 200 below here, so I've actually given myself another little buffer. So all the way through here, we're giving ourselves little buffers so we can stick to our plan. We've set our calories 100 calories below, or if you're doing a fat loss plan, like 300, 400 plan, uh, calories below, then we've set our total calories for the day slightly below that target, and then we've set our soul snacks at an, um, uh, say 300 calories below that. So all the food that we had previously is all our sorry, healthy food helping us to achieve our nutritional goals. This helps us to achieve a mental goal of living a perfect life and living a nice life and having a social life and stuff like that. And soul snacks, these 400 calories I've got here that I've buffered for, I could potentially put that towards like a meal out if I was going to go for a meal out. If I saved up those for three days, that well, if I saved up 400 calories for three days, that could be 1,200 calories. I could go and absolutely smash a pizza for that and still be within my calories for the uh, for the week. So this is important why you build in these templates and why you build in these buffers. It allows you that sense of freedom and control. Is that, well, I know if I have that, if I have 300, uh, 30 calories of uh, Pringles and then, you know, a bottle, of, uh, bottle of beer, well, I can still enjoy that and still be within my calories. The issue comes with a lot of my clients is that they just smash all this food. They don't log it. They don't account for it. And then they're really upset because they think they've messed up the diet. And actually, ironically, when you look at it, it's not actually that bad what they've done. But because they haven't logged it, the uh, the sort of the, the contemplation of going over their diet is actually worse than the impact of actually going over their diet. So it's important you log this, important you prepare for it and give yourself that, that leeway. Now, of course, if I wanted to have, say, I mean, you've got those 270 calories there. I could have another couple of scoops of protein now and, and then the banana, you know, maybe not a bit any more creatine, but there's zero calories in that anyway. I could have another um, couple of scoops of whey and uh, and a banana instead of that if I wanted to, and that'd be that'd be absolutely fine as well. You know, I've already hit my protein target here, so I don't need to, you know, I don't need to have any more protein today. I'm already there, but more protein is not going to harm you. You know, I'm not really close to my carbohydrate uh, target there. I'm still at say 100 100 grams off, but I'm actually over on my fat calories. So I could go back here if I wanted to and say. Um, so I've got my, my breakfast, I could change that so I'm not having as much eggs. So let's let's go into that and say, save that as, say, template one. So that would be like a an ideal template that I would give to someone and say, look, these are the calories that you would that you would be aiming for to have in a meal. So for me, 600 for breakfast, 650 odd for lunch, and then 650 odd for, for evening meal. 
Um, and then we've got um, about 500 calories for, um, this is about, yeah, just, just shy of 500 calories, 600 calories for um, for lunch. So actually, by do, by just writing in what I actually do have, I've actually split it down naturally anyway. So say we're talking at the beginning was 500 each, actually 600, 600, 600, and then 600 for snacks. Well, that's actually perfect for me. So um, so, so I'm not really, really going to adjust that. I don't need to. I'm within my calories. Now, what are we going to do? Because I said at the beginning that you wouldn't want to say, like, this is what I have every single day. Although I probably quite probably would have the majority of this Monday to Monday to Friday. Um, I might change my evening meal because steak and chips every night, although that'd be very nice. Um, we'll get boring after a while um, or maybe not. And, um, and say like chili and rice, I might change that up to something. So what, what about if we're going to do that? Now, what you want to do is go back and you, when you're building your templates, if say you're building it in a day, what you might want to do is duplicate a day out and then we can change the, the additions. Okay, let's, so let's show you how to do that. So if you're on my fitness pal or whatever you're doing and uh, you've built your ideal day, template day, then what you might want to do is have another template day. So duplicate the day exactly. And then what you do is you go in. So I've duplicated my template day here. So what we're going to do is going to have template two. Now, the reason why you duplicate it and all the foods come over at the same time, and this might take a little bit longer if you're doing it in a day by day thing. You should have to go uh, breakfast. Yeah, I had that lunch had that and so you've got the whole day duplicated once you have got it well that's fine because all you then do is say well, well okay well maybe i'm not going to have um eggs and bagels for breakfast maybe i'm going to have something else so a meal i sometimes have would be let's say um i have like blueberries so wait for that to pop up so what we do is we then start swapping the foods out um so that we can make the calories match for what they were before so we're going to get these blueberries we're going to stick it over here uh, let's just put in a value of 100 grams now you'll notice the total calories are going up that's fine don't worry about that um, and then i have some strawberries so what we're going to do is we're going to replace the foods and then delete off the other foods so we're going to put the strawberries in there uh, let's say we're going to have 100 of those as well and we can tweak this in a minute Okay, and what I have is I have some yogurt. So let's just put um, the oh, actually the yogurt I have is Onken at the moment. All these brand names. I should drop the drop the tag on them and get some sponsorship. But so this is the one I have. This Onken ma mango and papaya is absolutely awesome. Um, uh, and I have that. I go for about three or four pots of that in a week. So I have normally about say 150 grams, about a third of a pot. Okay. Now what I do is I would like, I know I have a third of a pot because I've measured it out in a bowl once. So I know that if I have, I think it's about three and a half like splodges of spoons, that's about 150. So I know that's what it is. The first couple of times you do this, you'll have to measure it out yourself. But as soon as you know, right, that is that much, don't ever weigh it again. Um, and then I also have some whey. So I'll go for my, my branded whey again. So let's put that in there. And I'll have uh, two scoops of that. Okay, so now we've... Oh, let's just try that again. Two scoops. Okay. So now we've got this huge breakfast here. So um, ideally what we want to be getting is to the double the amount of calories. So we're nearly there. So now we've got our... So this is what this basically is, a fruit salad with some whey and yogurt. And I have the fruit salad and the yogurt. And then I have the, the whey separate. So we're going to take out the eggs take out the bagels, take out the butter, and then we're left with this um, breakfast here. Now, what I normally would have, I would normally have a banana as well. So let's stick the banana in there, put the banana in there. Okay, you're gonna have a medium banana. Oh, it's not logged it, let's just try again. Like medium banana. And now you see we're close to those calorie targets. Now. What I wouldn't do is, if this is the meal you would probably have, I wouldn't look to say, oh, I only got 500 calories there, I need to have something else, because that amount of food is actually enough food for me for that meal. Yes, it's below the calories that I would normally have, like say with the eggs and bagels, but that's enough to fill me up. So I don't need to, there's a lot of people who think, oh, I must eat to my calories, I must eat them at the calories that are on my plan. No, you don't, absolutely you don't. Just eat to the calories until you're full, 
And then if you've got spare, well, that's it. Fine, just bank them for some other time when you do want to have extra calories. So say we've got breakfast. So I've got my two scoops away, which I have in water. Then I've got my yogurt plus my fruit here. So it's giving me a decent amount of carbs, decent amount of protein and low fats this time. So that's fine. So that's my breakfast too. And then we go through and we can change up all these other ones here. So say, for example, I want to change steak and chips. Sometimes I might have, let's say we have a chicken. So instead of steak and chips, what I'm going to have instead, so remember it's the raw values. We always go for the raw values. So we're going to just put the chicken in there. Uh, now I have normally have about 200 grams of chicken. So let's put that in there. Oh, is that gone? Yep, 200 grams of chicken. And I would have um, some rice. So let's go for the raw values again. Uh, wait for the thing to load. And pull this over there. So I've rice, I have 100 grams of rice. Uh, and then um, I would take out, and then actually what I would normally have then is I'd normally have some sauce. So let's go for, uh, let's go for, let's have a tikka masala sauce. So I'd have that. So chicken tikka masala for my evening meal. Um, now again, it's going to pull up the jars here. So I would make this as I did with the chili and rice. I would make this in bulk and then just, uh, so what I would do in the evening is I would make, I would cook up this, this, uh, this chicken curry and I'd have that on a nice plate with some salad and stuff like that. And then the others I'd put into Tupperware. So while I'm cooking my evening meal, I'm also cooking my meals for the next couple of days. It's a little time-saving thing, like the time-saving tip you want to, want to look at. So we've done that. And then once we've put all those in, then we delete off the other foods. So we take off the steak and chips. You can see that's, I think that's slightly more than it was before, but that's absolutely fine. And then, uh, and then the chili and rice will keep that because um, you know we we'll normally have that anyway. But we can also edit that out. So say if you went out to Nando's or something, you could potentially edit that out. But what we're looking to do is having a template where we have a template for two different days. But what we're what we're trying to get here is that the meals are around about the same calories, so that we know if we have this combination of food, it will fit the calories that we've made for ourselves. So we'll put in there chicken tikka and rice okay uh, and then we've got chili and rice so what yeah if you if you want to go back and edit the chili and rice and do, do the same sort of thing there um healthy snacks i'll probably keep that the same because my snacks generally tend to be the same but um but the the soul snacks there for for 400 calories and you can see we're now massively below here so instead let's take the um let's take those out and we'll put in a flapjack because sometimes i have a flapjack uh, i quite like flapjacks so where's the one i normally have Okay, there, there we are. Okay, so we're gonna put the flapjack in there. We're gonna have one bar. Uh, and because that's 400 calories, so if we do have our flapjack, we know that we can't have our beer and crisps in the evening. So it's a trade off for the snacks there. Flapjacks, I would say, are sort of like a semi healthy snack because they do have a fair bit of fat from margarine or butter, which we'll ever put in. And some of them add a little bit of cane sugar as well, which isn't great. But it's a soul snack. So now we're 2,500, so we're slightly above what the calories were for the previous template, but we're still below here. And if we look at our macros here, so because we've taken out the eggs the uh, and and some of the uh, the steak there, the fats has dropped down. The carbs now has gone up because we've um, added in the flapjack instead of the crisps and the beer, and the protein's slightly higher as well because you get more protein per 100 in chicken than you do in, in steak. So um, that's because of the fat. So now we've got a, a slightly different macro split. So here, we're actually we're bang on with the fats here. We're slightly over on the proteins and we're slightly under on the carbs. So that's fine because we're, we're around about where we need to be with the, uh, with the macros here. The main thing is we've hit the protein amount, which we did on the other one as well. And, uh, and the calories are within check. So that's great. So now we've got, um, we've got two templates to work from. So how does this look if we, um, I can do this fancy exporting thing. So let's just take that away. So now what we've got then is if you were to say screenshot this from your MyFitnessPal or whatever you use, um, you could put it in and have this as sort of like a menu that you could print out. So what we what here, we've got all our meals. So we've got our breakfast, the chili and rice we're gonna have for lunch, chicken, tikka and rice we're gonna have for evening meal, some healthy snacks there, 
and the soul snack. So my um, my software comes with this natural, little, nice little macronutrient analysis tool there as well. So you can see there that my um, that that's a split there. It's 34 protein, 50 carbs, and 16 odd on fats. If, uh, if we go back to the other one, so we can compare these two. So we go back to template one. If we split that. And we can see here that the um, obviously I've got some alcohol in there, so there's some alcohol dif difference there. So it's higher fat, protein's about the same, and the carbs are lower. So we're still hitting the, the calories we need to. We're still within a slight deficit. And by doing that, we've now got two plans that we can work towards. I've got two plans with meals that I would regularly eat anyway. They're around about the same calories, so I know that if I was to swap off steak and chips here with the um, let's just go back to. Um, the other one, oh, it's gone. So if we swapped off steak and chips there, 650 calories. If we swap that out with, say, the chicken uh, tikka masala, we would know that's around about the same calories. So that's fine. We can do that, and um, and and that's that's quite nice because we've got meals that we like now, and we've got some healthy snacks, and we've got some soul snacks in there as well. So that whole process took me about, I think, 40 minutes on this video. So sorry for the long video there. But um, if you follow that plan and you follow that way of building in your own fitness tracker app, whatever you whatever you use, you can you can get um, two ideal days which you could follow. And then all you need to do when you're logging your food is go well. Breakfast I had breakfast two, so I'll just add it from ten or or day two or day one, whatever. And you go through your meals. And if you have the same stuff repeatedly, all you have to do is say, yeah, add breakfast, add lunch from this day, add lunch from this day. You just go through and you continually just um, lock track your food. And what this what this means is that if you are having the same uh, breakfast every single day, um, you're having the same sort of like, if, if you can make all your meals up to say, say the chili and rice, if you change that to say sweet and sour chicken, for example, with the same calories, what you would do is you would very quickly build up a, this is your standard calories you have in the day. And the only thing you, that's really variance is the snacks. So then you, in, in terms of progressing with your logging, you don't have to track the stuff you always have, which is the same, because it's always the same. And the only variance is the things you actually have to sort of monitor. So it comes into once you've established that consistency of action, you actually have to track less because you know that if you're having that thing, you've weighed out and you know exactly what you're having. Well, those calories they're accounted for, that's always gonna be the same, so we don't have to count those but we do count or do have to track or monitor the snacks, the variants. So it becomes a little bit easier to track your food and actually you can do it on the fly. You don't need actually need a tracking app after that. So um, I hope you enjoyed that video. Let's just put that back there. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you enjoyed that walkthrough and you got some uh, some ideas on how to do your own plan there. I mean, all this stuff is is stuff that obviously I do with my clients and I do for them. And it's, it's um, what people tend to forget is that when they ask me for a diet plan, they're not asking for a diet plan because anybody can do a diet plan. I mean, you've just seen me do it there in 40 minutes. Okay, my skills are slightly higher than the majority of people who don't do nutrition for a living. But if you took the time, if you watched this video and did and did it yourself, you could build a diet plan yourself which fits your calories and fits your macros quite easily. The, the thing that people um, get stuck on is, is the accountability, the, the, the support that's behind that. Now, a lot of people are really motivated and they can get that stuff done themselves, no problem. And then some people need a bit of a kick and that's where I come in. So um, I, this will help you build your diet plans over for now. So it'll give you all the tools you need to build that diet plan. If it is the case that you need someone to be accountable to and to help you through and to give you a little more, bit more advice and, and, and making sure you're sticking on track, that's where I come in. So that's my that's my service that I do. Yeah, you get the diet plans and all the training plans and all other stuff in my app, um, but the real skill, the real technique and the real coaching comes from helping you stay on that plan and we're looking at all the habits and things you need to employ to do that. Um, so that's giving you a start and uh, hopefully you won't need me. If you do need me, if you do want me to, to give you a hand, just uh, just give me a shout, no problem at all. Um, but I've given you all the tools there. You should be able to build your own perfect diet plan from scratch using this video and the two videos previously, which I'm gonna link here. Oh, no, here, sorry. It's uh, reversed on the camera. And, um, and I hope you got some value from that. If you did, please share, please like. Leave me a comment if it helped you. I like to know that I'm helping people. And uh, have a great day. See you later.